Hey guys, my name is Janelle if you're new here and this is a video for the new year. It is 20 plus 19 ideas of things you can declutter starting this year. 20 things are stuff and thing oriented and the other 19 are not thing related. 20 items from this video will be related to physical items and 19 things will be non-physical items to declutter from your life such as habits, behaviors, and etc. Here are 20 physical items you can declutter from your life this new year. Number one, any clothes that don't fit, that are damaged, that are worn out very much and are beyond what you will realistically repair. I will never take anything to the tailor so it's not realistically, so it's not realistic for me to expect myself to take something there. At that point, I really should just get rid of an item. I'm not good at repairing clothes. Two, to add to that, broken things that are beyond repair, any equipment, technology, tools, utensils, and stuff like that. Anything that you did not use at all in 2018. Any hobbies or interests that you thought you would be interested in and then you just haven't had the interest since you bought whatever you needed to do such hobby. Maybe you thought you would start watercoloring and you didn't watercolor. So five, any subscriptions to anything that caused you to live outside of your means or cause you financial stress or that are just really expensive that you really shouldn't be spending money on. And depending on what your income is, that could be as simple as Netflix or that could be more intense like a monthly massage subscription. Six, any beauty products that you force yourself to use because of purchase guilt. Um, any sentimental items that aren't really sentimental like ticket stubs if you fly very frequently, movie tickets if you see a lot of movies. If you're someone who doesn't get to travel much, keep that plane ticket by all means, but if you're someone who travels a lot, maybe it's not really that sentimental to you and it's worth getting rid of. Anything you bought because you fell victim to very good advertising. I personally bought a yoga wheel this last year. It is not necessary by any means for yoga, but I thought for some reason it was. The only thing you really need for yoga is a mat and blocks do help. The yoga wheel is not necessary, so I'll be getting rid of that this year. Uh, get rid of anything that you bought to be like somebody else. So basically anything that the Kardashian family sells might be a good idea. Any gifts that you really, really don't want, you just feel guilty getting rid of. Honestly, once you get rid of the thing, usually the guilt goes away unless that person like ask about it, but hopefully they understand the situation. Take a picture of it, let go of it, especially if it's taking away value from your life. Get rid of anything that's physical that doesn't have to be, like grocery member cards, any movie downloads that could be DVDs if you don't really love DVDs for the sake of having a DVD. Get rid of or at least organize anything that causes you mental clutter. So if you first walk through the door and there's a million things for you right there to have to worry about and deal with, maybe it's time to get rid of those items or at least put them somewhere where you don't get stressed out as soon as you walk into your home looking at those things. I need to do this one, but get rid of anything you have a ridiculous number of multiples of. Maybe it's candles, blue jeans, drive through napkins, a ridiculous amount of plastic bags from grocery stores, throw pillows. Get rid of anything that you bought just in case. I remember I thought like now that I had this new car that I needed to have picnic supplies constantly available in case I decided to like have a picnic. And so I went out and bought like two lawn chairs and like a blanket and I just sat in my car and I never had a spontaneous picnic and this space could be used for something else. So I'm getting rid of that. Get rid of anything you just really hate and don't like to deal with or just don't like. I really hate duvet covers. Yes, I understand they protected the sheets. Yes, I understand that they serve a purpose. Do I like them? No. Am I lazy? Yes, I got rid of it. Now I just have a comforter, so that solves that problem. But yeah, I just really hate duvet covers. Um, so if there's anything like that in your life, like just let it go. Get rid of anything that you can live without. Like if you don't need a car, maybe it will add a lot of value to your life not to have to worry about those expenses, including the car payment, gas, and insurance, and just use public transit if possible. I got rid of a pair of rain boots a few years ago because I have boots that are waterproof. I didn't need specific boots just for rain in a place that where it doesn't rain that heavily that much. Get rid of storage options that you no longer need after downsizing. Let go of any mass-produced decor that doesn't add value to your life and it's just taking up surface area and it's more of a hassle to clean than it is adding unique colorfulness or cuteness to your living space. Get rid of anything you've been meaning to donate or sell that's just been sitting in your maybe pile for a really long time and you just haven't dealt with it. Let's go ahead and deal with it so you can keep moving forward. And then lastly, get rid of all expired things. Medicines, batteries, food, beauty products, mascara, anything that's bad, let it go. That's it for the 20 physical things. The 19 non-physical things are honestly almost more important to me than the physical things. 
Number one, see if you can get rid of any activities that make you feel inauthentic. I know if I like worked as a car salesman or if I was trying to pressure people to buy things all the time, that would really go against my morals. And so I would take effort along this year to see if I could change that or anything that makes you feel inauthentic and not real to yourself and your own morals. Declutter any lack of self-awareness that bothers you. I used to be super religious and that was like the only thing I cared about and then when I kind of came out of that I realized I had no idea what was going on with the world, what the world problems were or anything like that and I just made some effort to learn a little bit about politics and the state of the economy. It really helps just to learn like a little bit about a subject so you don't feel completely ignorant about something. Let this be the year that you declutter fear. The fear of judgment of other people, the fear of going against unpopular opinion, the fear of getting to really know yourself, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let go of some of the closed-mindedness you have. The world is a big, beautiful place if you are open to it and open to experiences and open to understanding and at least being able to understand someone else's perspective or another culture's perspective. Let 2019 be the year that you let go of your unknown boundaries and you start to know your own boundaries. Maybe there's areas of your life that you're not comfortable with yet but you're working on it or there's things that trigger you. Let this be the year that you set those boundaries up for other people and yourself. Be open to communicate, be vulnerable, but also be able to vocalize to yourself and other people what's okay for you and what's not okay for you. Let go of harsh judgments of yourself and for other people. We're all just humans, we all make mistakes, we're all just learning and growing together and judging doesn't help anything for the most part. Let go of anything that no longer serves you. The only thing consistent about the universe is that it is always changing and so are you. So if you've changed, that's okay. Let yourself to surrender to the old you and welcome the new you. People are always changing and hopefully for the better and that's a really good thing. Let go of any relationships that are toxic, whether that's friends, family, or romantic. And again, you kind of use those boundaries for yourself um, in terms of how much time and space you share with those people. Let go of fear when it comes to getting out of your comfort zone or being challenged. This doesn't have to be something super radical like going to India like I'm doing, which is basically another planet to me and like a huge deal for me to do and I'm a little overwhelmed about it, but still doing it anyways. But something I started doing to take baby steps to get out of my comfort zone was taking cold showers in the mornings. I don't do it all the time. Another thing that I used to really hate was touching fish. Like I dated someone who used to like to fish a lot and he would always hand them to me and I would always be like, no, they're gross, I don't want to touch it. But then after a certain time, like I let myself touch the fish and I was like looking at them and I was like, okay, this is like an easy baby step to get out of my comfort zone. Also trying foods that you don't usually like. I used to hate beans, I love beans now. I don't know what was wrong with me back then. Um, and those little things add up. So when you do get to the bigger things, it's not a huge transition and you have all these baby steps getting you to the right direction. Let go of insecurity about yourself, your beliefs, your looks, whatever it is. Just let it go. Be at peace with it. Stop thinking about it. Life is too short. Let go of super unrealistic fantasy versions of yourself. If you want to watch my fantasy self video, I will put a link in it here and down in the description. It's one of my favorite videos and if you've never seen anything else from me before, go watch that one. Let go of one bad habit this year, such as shopping when you're feeling sad or lonely or a little bit depressed. Let go of limiting beliefs. Notice when you tell yourself I can't do something or I shouldn't do something or that's not something that I can do. I said this about traveling for so long because I didn't think I had the stuff it takes to be a traveler and I didn't think I was special enough to be someone who could just travel the world even though I'm not that well traveled yet. But yeah, I realized that there was no reason I couldn't. I actually, I physically, capably could do a lot of things and I said I couldn't just because I had limiting beliefs. And once you change that, then like the whole world is your oyster. Let go of comparison, whether that's positive or negative. Like if you are someone who wants to travel and you see someone traveling a lot, don't let that get you down. That was me for seven years before I could actually start traveling and I'm just starting to do it now. My friend just told me this quote the other day and I really like it, I want to share it with you guys. But it's kind of like comparing your suffering with someone else's suffering. Like, oh, you know, I don't deserve to be sad, I'm so blessed. And it says basically, it doesn't matter if you're drowning in 2 feet of water or if you're drowning in 20 feet of water. You're still drowning. So maybe, you know, all of your life circumstances are really good, but you still have all of these struggles and that's okay. And you're allowed to feel exactly how you feel. But with that said, my next point, give up any feelings of entitlement. 
When you start to change your perspectives from being entitled to seeing everything as a gift and being just so grateful and so overwhelmed with gratitude, that has been the biggest change in my happiness that I've noticed in the last few months. And the days that I can practice gratitude and just be grateful and feel blessed, my happiness is way higher than on days where I feel like I deserve something or I need something or I'm entitled to it. So try out gratitude for a couple of months. I promise it'll change your life probably more than anything else in this video that I've mentioned so far. 16. Give up worrying. Easier said than done because I'm a total worrywart and I get really anxious. All of those thoughts don't change anything at all. I had a patient come up to me once and they were about to vomit and they were telling me they're really scared to vomit because they hate vomiting and they're crying. And I basically told them, look, you're either gonna throw up or you're not gonna throw up. Being worried about it right now isn't gonna change the fact. If you're gonna throw up, it'll suck for a little bit and you'll get over it. But worrying about it is just gonna make you more anxious and more intense and it's taking away any calmness you could have in this moment where you don't throw up person didn't end up throwing up, but they were really freaked out for about 30 minutes, and that's 30 minutes they could have been a little bit happier. Give up living in the past. So you're not your mistakes, you're not all the terrible things that happened to you, you're also not necessarily all the things you've accomplished, even though those are still great things. We're all just beings, and I think the most important things that matters is are you a good person, are you trying to make a difference, are you trying to help other people, and are you enjoying yourself and not making the world a worse place by existing. Try to get out of the habit of losing sight of the present moment. I listened to this meditation lecturer person called Tara Brach and she says how a negative thing hits like your insides immediately. So if someone says something bad about you or you notice a bad event, like you feel that on a deep emotional level immediately. But if something happy happens or something beautiful happens or you see something amazing like a sunset, it takes 20 times longer for it to hit you in that deep place. So if you see a beautiful moment, if you see an act of kindness happening between two strangers and it just really touches you, like take a second, stop, really let it in, let it hit that deep inside bit because it takes 20 times longer. Anything that's happening right here and now, just take a minute to appreciate it and let it sink in, especially if it's something good or better than good. Let go of any purchase regret that you had over the last year or any purchase regret you had since you found out about living a meaningful life, intentionally living, shopping intentionally, downsizing, minimalism, etc, etc. I think most people that live in the West make massive purchase regrets, myself included. And there's no need to beat yourself up about it. Be gentle with yourself. Fix it if you can. You know, make the best of a situation and just learn better and do better next time. And the last thing worth mentioning that I really want to declutter in this year is to let go of the constant 24-7 hustle, hustle, busy lifestyle. There's times when I'm busy and that's at work, but I don't need to be busy at home all of the time. I feel like a lot of us, if you open a very competitive and goal-oriented mindset and that we forget to just live life. And so it's okay to go outside and watch leaves blow in the trees or take some time to rest and regroup before you go back out there and then put your hustle game on. It doesn't have to be all the time. And that's it. That's the end of the video. 20 plus 19 things. I don't want to keep it too long, so... Um let me know what you think of this video, add anything you want to add in the comments. Sorry I was gone for a second, I needed to like regroup because I was getting a little bit of YouTube burnout. My mantra for the new year, I don't know if it'll last the whole year, is to be radically and intimately myself. And so if that's something you want to adopt, feel free to take it as well. Um, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.